uh, the Alaska Yukon moose. It's the world's biggest deer. Some say they will weigh as much as 1,400 pounds. That's four, maybe even five times heavier than a big whitetail buck. Does that mean we need a cartridge that's <laughs> four times more powerful and a bullet that's four times heavier? Well, let's dive into moose cartridges and find out just what we need. Hey everyone, Ron Spomer talking about one of my favorite hunts, moose. I love both the magnificence of that animal and the wilderness country in which they live. Oh, it's just sort of the epitome of the outdoor adventuring hunter's dream. It's just too good to be true almost. And the meat of the moose. I mean, they call it the beef of Alaska. Everyone lives on moose up there if they can get a tag. So it's a big deal and it's a big moose, do we need a big cartridge? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Now, we can start with pretty much any cartridge, but I think the 35 Whalen is a good way to go because a lot of people think with that big animal, you need a bigger bullet, meaning a wider bullet, a heavier bullet. 35 Whalen built on the 30-06 case with a 35 caliber bullet, not a bad option. And it doesn't have excessive recoil. And I don't think we need high recoil or high velocity for our moose cartridges. <laughs> You're just not needing really to take long shots on a moose. They're not exactly the most brilliant animal in the woods, although they can be awfully cautious. They've got great noses and pretty darn good ears, so they can be cautious if there's a lot of hunting pressure. But in general, you were looking at an animal that has a chest of about 36 inches top to bottom, and it makes it pretty easy to drop a cartridge in there and you can increase your maximum point blank range by going fairly high at mid range and you're still in the vital zone. So you don't need a super flat shooting cartridge. Most of us then would step down in size so we don't get the recoil problems that we would with the bigger magnums in the 33s and the 35s. Like this 338 Lapua magnum right here. <laughs> It'll certainly do the job with a 300 grain bullet or even a 270 grain bullet or just about anything. But man, you don't need to suffer the recoil of that one. So a lot more popular would be something like the... Uh, 300 Win Mag, a lot of folks use that. It's been popular for elk and moose for a long time. It's used a lot. But then there's the 338 Winchester Magnum. And a lot of people think that's probably getting to be about optimum. Nothing wrong with a 9362, that 0.366 inch diameter bullet. Not all that popular in the US, but sure is in Europe. And that's got more than enough power to handle a moose. Then there's eight millimeter Remington, kind of representing that eight millimeter family. Not a lot of folks use that one. Jump up to the 375 H&H. &H. That's another big one that some people think you need for moose. We're going to question that. And then there's a 416 Remington Magnum. That's your 375 necked up to a 416 and the 416 Rigby. These two are just about identical in their ballistic performance and their terminal performance. All work great for moose, but in my estimation and in my experience, they're just a little bit too much. <laughs> Nothing wrong with using them, but in the real world, people take moose with a lot tamer cartridges than that. I took my first moose with a .30-06. <laughs> in fact, I took my second moose with a .30-06. The first one was with a 150-grain bullet. That was accident. The, uh, the bush pilot flew off with all my custom 200-grain hand loads under the seat of the bush plane, and I had to scramble through the cabins where we were hunting up in British Columbia, and all we found were some 150-grain federal soft points, just cup and core bullets. But I took my moose, one shot, right in the neck, and tipped him over. Well, he still had to finish him off with a 30-30, but that did the job. Now, another one I used was a 280 Ackley Improved with the 140-grain Barnes X bullets. Worked just great. And uh, gosh, there's nothing wrong with this one. In fact, I'm going to talk about what this little guy did and see if you can guess in the meantime what it is. I borrowed this from the outfitter I was with. We were really on a fishing trip. And he said, hey, you might want to pick up a moose tag because moose season is going to open while you're up here. If you want, you can shoot one. And just borrow my rifle. Sure enough, first morning I walked out of the cabin, went to check some beaver ponds while they were making breakfast, and there stood this big old bull. And I took him with one shot, 
And this was the smallest cartridge I ever took a moose with. But I'm going to tell you what happened with that one and compare it to the biggest that I ever took a moose with. And the big one that I used was probably that one, 300 WSM. That's all the larger I ever went for my moose. And I've taken a good seven bull moose. And several friends of mine who I hunted with have used similar cartridges as I, and they've taken several. And what we discovered was there's not a heck of a lot of difference in the response or the terminal performance of these bullets on the moose from one of the light ones to one of the heavy ones. And I think the thing we want to look at then are the muzzle energies and consider what's happening with these bullets with more energy and do they make a difference on moose. So if you look at the chart we're going to flash up here, you're going to see your energies from a low of 2,428, way down at the bottom. That's the 308 Winchester. I watched a gal with one, a little savage rifle. She took one shot in her moose and I don't think it went 10 yards and fell over dead. And, uh, then the biggest one that I used was this WSM, 3,752 foot-pounds of energy. How did that moose react compared to the smallest bullet I ever used? Just about the same. And this is the thing. They stand there as if you didn't even hit them almost all the time. I think only maybe once did I have a moose run. I remember shooting one of the 270 WSM up in BC, and it dashed forward and fell over, probably went 40 yards at the most, maybe 30. That was a 130 grain bullet from a WSM 270 right through the shoulders, and that was it. Um, the 300 WSM, that moose lifted his head and looked around like, what was that noise? <laughs> 165 grain, no, it was 180 grain uh, Swift A-frame on that one. I would have thought I'd have gotten a little more action out of that extra horsepower, but no dice. Oh, I want to show you this picture. This is one of the my favorite guides. This kid was outstanding in every respect. Incredible woodsman and really knew how to interact with his clients to make them feel like they knew what they were doing even if they didn't. His name was Dawson Devaney and Dawson if you're out there I want to thank you again for all the great hunts we've had over the years. This kid was really a great guide. Now another one on here number four on the list is uh, not a wind mag it's a Weatherby mag. I should have put W uh, B Y on that one. But a friend of mine shot this big bull, 65 inch spread on it. And he was delivering almost 4,000 foot pounds of energy. What did that moose do? Same thing that all of mine did. Just stood around for a little bit, dashed forward maybe 20, 30 yards and stopped again. And he gave it one more. I don't think he would have had to because it would have tipped over. That has been the story. So what is this uh, small one that I used right here? Some of you by now might have figured that one out. You're looking at it thinking that's a 270. Pretty close, but it's even smaller. It's the 6.5-06. The 6.5-06 is the 30-06 neck down to take a .264 bullet. So it's a 6.5. Like so many of them these days, everybody's crazy about them. Back then, that was a popular Wildcat. It's actually been a Sammy Spec cartridge since then. Do I think that's the best one for moose? No, I sure don't, but I'll tell you what happened. I used this little bullet. Well, it wasn't this one. It was one similar to it. An all-copper bullet. It was called the J36 from Lost River Ballistics in Idaho. I don't think they're making bullets anymore, but it was an all-copper bullet with a bronze tip on it. So you can expect performance about like the uh, Barnes X bullets, the TSX, TTSX, that sort of thing. But look at how tiny that little bullet is. Did in a moose with one shot. Then there's my biggest, 180 grain, swift A-frame bullet, famous for deep penetration, retaining a lot of its weight. The bull acted no differently than the one that I shot with the 120 grain bullet. So that's why I say I really don't think you need anything like this 416 Rigby to take a moose. Now you might want to just because what else are you going to shoot with big bullet like that uh, unless you go to Africa. You don't have a lot of excuses to use the big board if you want to use one. Yeah, that's a good reason. But gosh, guys, I mean, you can go with that 300 Weatherby Magnum like my buddy used on his big one. I've used the 7 millimeter Remington Magnum. Worked just fine. In fact, this is the only one that I used to actually knock a moose down. But I sort of cheated when I did it. 
I was shooting a Blazer R8 rifle chambered for the 7 rem mag, obviously, and I used a factory loads on this one. It was Winchester, 150 grain, a bonded bullet. I think they called it the Power Max Bonded. And I knew if I wanted to drop a moose in its tracks, I probably needed to hit its spine. And that's what I tried to do. And, and because of that big hump on their back, I shot too high up into that hump. And it's nothing but a bone sticking up off of the vertebrae, kind of like a Brahma bull. So it, it was not anywhere close enough to the, um, the, the vertebrae and the spinal column to knock him down. He wobbled him. So then I lowered my sights and hit him in the spine. And, uh, and that put him down right there. Was it because it was a big, massive, heavy thump from a 7mm rem mag? No, a little 150 grain bullet. Let's see what my chart says. Number eight, 2,899 foot pounds of energy. It just really doesn't matter what the foot pounds of energy are. If you hit that spine and break it down, they go down. Otherwise, they are so big and they can absorb so much energy that I just don't think you can knock them down. I haven't tried it with one of these big guys, but I bet if I did, I'd get the same reaction. So, what do the uh, Alaskans use? A lot of folks up there are pretty conservative, especially the ones who are sort of living off the land yet. And there are quite a few folks who still do that. They hunt, they fish, you know, they maybe pan for gold or something, but they're kind of living off the land and they need that meat every year. They tell me one of the more popular rounds is the massive 223 Remington. What? <laughs> well, of course. Folks all over who are just going out to efficiently harvest their meat supply will use little cartridges like that successfully because they place their shots in the right location. I imagine someone taking a moose with this waits until all the conditions are perfect. Broadside moose behind the shoulder, hit the heart, or even if you just hit the lungs, little bullet from a 223 can certainly do the job. Bullet in the heart, come on. What do you expect is going to happen? These are not going to bounce off. And another real popular one for a long time up there was the 243 Winchester. That was back in the 1960s and 70s. You hear about that and think, man, that's not enough for moose. But they've used it up there and used it successfully. So what should you take for your moose hunt? My recommendation is don't worry so much about firepower or bullet mass and resultant energy. Worry about a good bullet that's going to stay in one piece deep penetration in case you have to take a bit of an angled shot on him in a rifle that you're familiar with, something that works for you. Now, when I do these little presentations on the best cartridge for deer, the best cartridge for elk and whatever, some people chew me out because I never give my answer for the best one. Come on, Ron, what is your favorite? And honestly, I don't have one, but I can tell you this. We knocked all of these off the table and I had to pull one out of this whole heap. Even though I've never shot a moose with it, I'd have to go with the 338 Win Mag. So if you want an absolute, by golly, Spomer says the 338 Win Mag is the absolute best compromise moose cartridge out there. The 416 will hit them harder. The 223 will be more efficient. <laughs> But the 338 Win Mag is right in the middle of the ballpark, by golly. That's the one you want. And I'm just assuming it's going to work just fine, even though I've never used it. <laughs> but that's my point, guys. If you, you can go ahead and pick one and say, I've declared this is the absolute best, but come on. We've all had different experiences, and this is why we continue to discuss this stuff and argue about it. And that's another complaint I get is, why do I keep going over this stuff again and again? Because we enjoy discussing these things. I mean, what hunter doesn't like to pick a fight with his buddy about that crappy caliber? You're telling me you're using a 25-06 on an elk? You're nuts. <laughs> so that's the fun of it all. And the reason I think we discuss this stuff, too, is just because it helps us understand what's going on. We learn more about ballistics, and we, we learn more about the game we hunt and how it reacts to being shot. We, we I think, come into this with the idea that we're going to get a bigger hammer, by golly, and we're going to kill everything dead just like that, which is an admirable goal. You know, a lot of guys get really worked up about a humane kill, what we used to call the quick, clean kill. And we definitely strive for that. But over the years, I've learned that that's more about where you put the bullet and the right bullet. So once it gets there, it can reach the vital organs. And going to a bigger, heavier bullet is just not the absolute answer. And I think too many guys make the mistake of going that way and then they can't handle the recoil. They flinch and they end up shooting worse and needing more shots to finish the animal than if they had a smaller cartridge and bullet. So I don't think the moose is going to care all that much. So 
make sure you take a 338 Win Man because that's the best moose cartridge in the world. Hey, this is Ron Spoma. I want to thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think the best moose cartridge is. Um, and do consider the rifle you're going to use because you've got to carry a rifle some pretty significant distances up there, either slopping through the mud and the swamps or going up the mountains. There's some pretty high mountains up in moose country, so I'm not sure you want to carry a 10-pound rifle if you can get one that works well at 6 pounds. That might be a topic for another presentation. In the meantime, hunt honest and shoot straight. Mm -hmm.